Sharks and Rays of Australia was produced uh, because we, we didn't have a very good understanding of the fauna back in those days. Well, the second edition basically is um, an upgrade of the first edition, but most importantly um, it includes another, um, or almost another 20-something species uh, which weren't previously discovered in this area. Um, the other facet of this book is that in the first book we had something like 96 species which didn't have names. Um, they were thought to be new species of, of uh, sharks and rays, new to science. And we've had the chance now to go through and look at those in a full scientific way to name them and describe them properly. And so this particular edition has all the species in the book named now. Fifteen years later there have been uh, a lot of changes both in the, uh, the, the systematics of sharks and rays. There have been some big changes to some of the, the groups, notably the skates and, uh, and dogfishes. But also there's been a big change in the way sharks and rays are perceived. Uh, there's a lot more focus now on um, problems faced by sharks around the world, particularly with the, uh, the international shark fin trade, which has led to, to huge declines globally. One of the things that's changed has uh, there's been an improvement in the way we do taxonomy. Um, classical taxonomy involved looking at animals um, under microscopes. Um, in the case of sharks and rays, you need to damn big microscope, but we do, do need to look at the, uh, at the features of sharks and rays in detail to discriminate between them. But the other change has been the, the rise of uh, molecular techniques, um, the barcode of life uh, methodology which has been used to try and discriminate between different species has sometimes uh, shown us uh, where we thought there were two different populations, these we now know are different species and sometimes when we thought there was one species uh, it turns out that there's, uh, there's as many as three or four. So whether they want to know about the, the distribution, where, where they're found, or about their biology, whether they're fished commercially, uh, whether there are major concerns for the species. So it, it's um, a place where you can go to and find all that information summarised in, in one book. The sharks and rays obviously of interest to uh, the general community. They are uh, charismatic animals to some people. Um, we like to think that uh, there's lots that we don't know about them and in fact that unfortunately is the case because uh, they've been little studied um, despite their, uh, their profile. There are a lot of things that can affect shark attack and we don't really understand many of those um, but, a, but a lot of it is, is just the summer syndrome where there's a lot more focus on sharks during the summer. Uh, also uh, it's often the time of the year when fish schools and things move closer into the coast and closer to beaches and and again, that can bring uh, sharks and people in, into closer contact. But yes, one of the, the great things to remember is that there are more and more people using the water every year. Um, there seems to be a resurgence in interest in sharks and rays from a research point of view. We, we're learning all sorts of things we didn't know before about them. Um, so the story's not over yet. We've still got lots of work to do.